Hey, what is going on guys? Today I wanna to take a look at some tools here. These are all in the line of Apex tools here from USA Gundam Store. So obviously that's where you can pick these up. The link will of course be down in the video description below. Check these out. And of course you can use my coupon code there as well, Zakorelius10 to save 10% off these as well as everything else there on the store. But uh, I thought about doing these as like separate videos each, but it would be kind of like a short video to do a video just on a set of tweezers or like just on a part separator. So we'll go through all these different tools in this video. And if you're only interested in one particular tool over the other, I'll put time codes down below so you guys can skip around in the video to seeing whichever particular tool you want to see first. We'll go ahead and start off with one of the more simple ones here, which is just the part separator. So first off, just nice simple packaging here. It's in that uh, light blue color, which is kind of like the uh, theme color for US Gundam store. You have the Gundam illustration there in the background. Very nice. Same like with the uh, stickers that you guys can get with your orders there. Uh, and then here on the back, just some information about that, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. This is also in collaboration with the uh, Simp, Simp Pro models and tools, supplies, resin conversion stuff, things like that. A lot of great products from Simp as well. Now this is, at first glance, looks very similar to like other different ones that you can get from Wave or something, but this one is a little bit different in that the blade is quite a little bit smaller on here. And then obviously you have the US Gundam Store text as well as the uh, VFIN logo there on the metal blade as well too. So just for a comparison, here is the Wave one and you can see the handle is basically the same, but the blade is gonna be a little bit different. Now the one thing that I, I mean, I love this tool, so I'm really happy to have another new version of this to try out. Uh, the one problem that I do have with it is that sometimes I find this blade is too wide. If it's a small part that you need to pry apart, sometimes this is a bit too long. So that's why I think this one could actually be quite useful in that it just got a smaller blade on here. So it should work. It seems like large enough, it should work for your bigger pieces, but also small enough that you can use it for smaller little bits and pieces as well too. Now that said, I do like how this one has a corner on there, like this rounded corner, because sometimes you can just like wedge it into there, shoop, into the part like that a little bit easier. With this one, without having that, you could just kind of have to go straight in with it. So I'm not sure if that's gonna be something that's really ultimately gonna really bother me all that much about it, but it does seem to be pretty good. So let's go ahead and give it a try, just grabbing a scrap piece here and say I wanted to take this apart and I'm kind of having some trouble. So what you want to do is just kind of find an edge where you can slip that into there and you just want to give it a little bit of a wiggle and then go around here onto the other side. You can see I tested some paint stuff on this. So we'll go around to the other side and what I kind of do is uh, kind of, you can't really, it's hard to do it just from one side. You have to kind of go back and forth sometimes on larger pieces like this, but wiggle it from both sides so you can get it off like that. And then like this one here as well too. If you got a part like this where it's kind of hard to get into anywhere, uh, just go for wherever you might be able to get it in uh, just to get the parts separated a little bit first. So like this uh, part of the part here is just kind of is part that's gonna be hidden so it doesn't really matter if you're a little bit more rough with that. Uh, just to get it separated just enough so that you can then get this tool into here easier pop that in and then just start working this apart like that. So there you have it guys, works pretty well. Now I will say that I do find that I think you do still have to be a little bit careful with it just because it is a narrow blade and then there's a hard edge on the side of there. So on this side right there, so when you're wiggling it, that hard edge can uh, damage the plastic just a little bit. Whereas with this one, again, because it's wide, you have uh, less of that rubbing against uh, the part, or less of like the corner, the edge of that. Uh, hitting the part as you're wiggling it. So I think pros and cons to both types of uh, blade here for that. This one, like I said, will be a lot more useful for little small little parts though that you need to pry apart. So very cool. It may seem at first like a pretty useless tool, like, oh, why am I gonna buy a tool just for taking things apart? But trust me guys, I've used this tool uh, a lot more than I would have expected. It was one that I didn't really expect to need for a long time. I didn't ever wanna buy one, then I finally bought one and it actually is really quite useful. So I would definitely recommend picking one of these up. So let's go ahead and then move on to the tweezers, which as you can see is a set of two different tweezers in here. Uh, and with, it says modeling, model is a knife on there, but I think that's just the wrong packaging here for this. So professional plastic modeling tool. There you go, you guys can see that on the back. Just again, same kind of general warnings about that. So this seems like a set of two different type of tweezers. And with both of them, you got a little protective cap that you can use on them. So we've got one that is just a straight pointy type, very pointy, you don't wanna be very careful with that and then the other type here, also pointy, but they've got a little bit of a bend to them. So the first thing that I'm noticing is how they're noticeably longer. So you can see these are the ones that I typically use here. These are just the Tamiya brand ones uh, and they're kind of similar in size, but these ones are definitely longer. So especially if you're like me with big hands, a little bit longer ones will be nice. 
it'd be a little bit more comfortable in the hand than rather holding on to something small. So as far as which type you prefer, this type or this type, honestly, I don't really know if there's really that much of a difference uh, that are really in terms of usefulness. I generally prefer the ones with a curved blade like this. This one has a, less of a curve and more of just an angle there, but still kind of the same general idea of these curved type ones like this. So either one, I think they can both be equally useful. There's not really much to necessarily test these on I me. Mean, they're basically, for the most part, I use my tweezers mostly just for like applying water slide decals and stuff. And as you guys can see there, the points are very sharp and then also they come together pretty nice and flat. They're right at the tip, so that's good. So I mean, basically, you would basically just be using these for decals or maybe like applying little small parts. Some people will use tweezers for putting in small parts. I usually don't do that because I find that really difficult to do because usually it's like a little tiny piece of slippery plastic that you're trying to hold with metal. It just doesn't really work with it unless you had like some like rubber grip or something on here. That said, they are definitely useful for applying like photo etch and uh, some like detail parts to your kits. Sometimes they can be useful for that as well too. But uh, just based on what I can see of these, they do uh, come together at a point very nicely. And let me see the other ones here. Yeah, they are very super sharp, of course, there. So these, I've got no doubt, should work very nicely. And now let's move on to the actual modeler's knife here, which is in just a similar packaging, again, as to everything else. And again, similar color as the uh, part separator in that same light blue color there. It looks uh, maybe slightly different, but basically, same light blue, right? So this is gonna be a similar kind of uh, craft modeling knife here and let's see what we got inside. So what we've got here is basically just the main handle with again the USA Gundam store title on there. Uh, this bit at the end which is like not to a super sharp point but just to like a little bit of a point there I'm sure that that is probably gonna be useful for something offhand. I mean I'm not sure exactly what I might end up using that for but I'm sure that'll probably come in handy every so often. It would be nice maybe if that was actually to like a full-on point. You could use it as like a, a part separator, just like a plastic part separator, not having a metal piece. Uh, that could be useful. Then you've got the cap for that that will fit on obviously once you've got the blade on there and then you've got a set of blades containing 15 blades for you to work with. So uh, people wonder sometimes I've been asked about how long uh, blades you usually use or how often you should change it. Basically if you're starting to notice more resistance in your in your cutting, if you notice it's getting harder to cut, that means the knife's getting duller and it's time to give it a a change. Usually uh, I'll change it uh, usually after a one master grade, sometimes maybe a little bit longer. High grades, I can usually go through a couple of high grades before it starts to get dull. Perfect grade one blade will, should be enough to get you through an entire perfect grade. Maybe you might need to, but uh, they usually last you know, well, relatively long enough. This pack of 15 blades should get you at least through 20 or 30 kits, if not more. So let's unscrew that to loosen it and stick in the blade here and then screw that back in to tighten it in and it does feel like a really nice solid grip on that for one so it's going to hold your blade in there really nicely and so you've got this uh, textured metal part here and also the plastic is textured here as well too so you've got uh, more of a surface to grab onto there uh, rather than just the metal part uh, for your gripping section. So now just once again to compare this to my usual tool, this is the knife that I've been using for a long, long time. This is the Tamiya Modeler's knife. Uh, so as you can see, kind of similar. Uh, it has a little bit longer of a metal grip, which you can see mine is very worn down now because like I said, I've been using it quite a lot for a, quite a long time. Uh, one thing that I do like about this is that it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit longer. So you can see, because it's got so it's got a little bit more weight to it, uh, which I like it to be nice and heavy. Also, it's got this little tab here on the back that stops the knife from rolling around. If you drop it, it won't roll anywhere. Whereas with this one, if you drop it, it might roll a little bit like that. But I believe I heard from Adam that the future versions of this knife are going to have a little bit different design where it will have a little tab or something on there to stop it from rolling. So that'll be good uh, for future versions. Also, the knife blade that they use is slightly different. This one is a little bit larger, but they're both in that 30 degree uh, angle, which I definitely recommend. I don't necessarily recommend using the longer type blade like the typical exacto blade I believe is, is, is longer blade and it comes to a much sharper point this angle of blade is definitely the one that I would recommend using so I mean, as for the general use for, of this I've got uh, no doubt that the blades are nice and sharp and will work very good for just removing nubs on here like that Overall for eight bucks, it's a great knife. If you guys uh, don't have a good knife or you're wanting to get a new one, maybe you just want to change out the one that you have, maybe the one that you're using is not super comfortable or anything. Uh, this one does seem like a really nice knife to use. So that is very nice. Also, I will say too, one thing about the cap, I mean, the cap, it's a simple thing, right? But I like that the cap doesn't push all the way down onto the blade. One thing that I kind of don't really like about this one is that when I put the cap on, it goes actually all the way down. And so the blade, end of the blade is actually poking into the, the cap. So then if, it, if I were to turn that or something like that, it could end up snapping off the very fine little, fine, uh, sharp tip point of that. 
if I turn this or something like that while this is stuck in there. So the fact that this one doesn't have that problem, I do kind of like that. So let's go ahead and move on then to the single bladed nippers. Now these are actually the 2.0 nippers I've got here with me, a set of the 1.0 nippers, which I've been using uh, for a little while. This is actually my, my second pair. This is my newer set. I have one set that I've been using for a while and this is the slightly newer one. But here are the 2.0 nippers. And as you can see, you just got some instructions on the back for just how to take care of that. It says to just keep the cover on there, you know, don't cut anything too thick. It's really only designed to cut gates. Uh, so, you know, something relatively small. And also done to overextend it out the other way. And also you got a 90 day replacement guarantee, which is nice as well too. If you get it in like sometime within the first 90 days, you end up snapping the blade or something like that. Hopefully that wouldn't happen, but all right, let's see. So here is the 2.0 ones and uh, generally the uh, cover for the handle seems to be the same, basically the grip on that, which is good, plastic grip. Let's go ahead and take off. Uh, and the cap is different, obviously, as you can see, the 1.0 cap is just this kind of softer plastic cap on there. The 2.0 cap is a nicer cap that is good, that fits on there better. And also immediately noticing that this spring gives you more resistance, so that one feels a little bit uh, more strong. It's, it's harder to press this close. This one, the spring on this one is weaker, so it, it closes really, really easily. And you'll notice both of them have the USA Gundam Store uh, branding on there. That's the kind of older version of the VFIN logo. And they both have the screw for adjusting that. That's basically to adjust it so that you, the inside of that will, will block it from uh, clamping too hard. So you can adjust that ever so slightly to be a little bit farther in or out to make sure that, so when you close this, it's not putting too much pressure up here on the blade to snap close too hard. Uh, so that's basically gonna block that. And then this pin sticking out over here on the side is blocking it from opening too much. So you can see uh, it won't open any farther than that because this little pin sticking out on the side of there. So those basically help to just limit the range of movement to what is optimal for you know, use of this. Now, as for the blades themselves, I mean, as you can tell, they're gonna look pretty similar. But if we take a look from the side, you can see the 2.0 nippers over here on this side, the blade is slightly longer. So you have a little bit more blade to work with there. And you can see here on the back, there's a slight difference as well too, in that with the 1.0 nippers, the blade goes all the way down like that, basically covering the whole space. With the 2.0 nippers, there's a little bit of a gap there at the end where there's no actual blade touching. Now the one I'm not sure necessarily like offhand what would be like the pros and cons of that. I guess for one, it would be good so that you're not trying to cut too much with this. If you're like cutting a, a piece of plot blade or something like that that's longer, which you necessarily not necessarily should do with these, but you might try cutting like the full length of the blade with this, or with this one, you might just uh, you're more inclined to just focus on just only using the end of the blade or like the main part of the blade there. But let's go ahead and put these to the test, cutting out some pieces here. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off here as you should, leaving a little bit of gate there like that. First impression is that it cuts super smooth. That was like, I could barely feel it cutting anything. We'll try out a couple more cuts on there and you're noticing number one, you're not really hearing much of a click there of the blades hitting each other. And also, yeah, just cutting really nice and smoothly. I don't necessarily recommend doing this and I don't do it, but some people like to use their nippers to just cut right up against the part to cut off the nubs like that. So I'll test it for those of you guys who do like to do that, but again, I would recommend doing it a different way. So there you can see is the cut of that flush up against there. And I want to try it over here one more time here. I did it better the first time. This one, I didn't get all that close, but the first one I got to be pretty flush. And that's the problem with doing this. You can get it really pretty flush with these uh, type of single blade nippers like this, like these or like similar ones from Godhand or something. You can get it pretty close, but still it's not gonna be as close as if you were to do it with a hobby knife and or sanding stick or sandpaper or file or something like that as well too. Let me just try a couple other ones here just to see if I can, just how close I can get that. Still I mean, pretty close, but I mean, again, I don't recommend that this is what these are for. Uh, but if you wanted to do use them for this, they seem to be getting it pretty close, but I still think you would still want to use a little bit of a hobby knife or sandpaper or something like that, just to sand that down a little bit more. I mean, overall, just like the 1.0, these are great, uh, very comfortable in hand. They don't weigh a whole lot. Uh, they just are cut nice and clean. And so yeah, like I said, the, the tightness of the squeeze of that does seem to be nicer as well too. It's much more comfortable, it feels like. Now, in comparison, these feel like a little bit flimsy as to how loose they are. I mean, these are still great, and I'll still surely use these 1.0 ones as well too. But these definitely have a great feel to them and seem to work pretty well now. I mean, how strong the blade is, if, if you're gonna drop it or something, or be cutting something that's too big for it, that's just something that you shouldn't do with these. So of course you do always wanna be careful. The blade could still break, but they do seem to be, I mean, pretty strong. So I, I have no doubt that if you're taking care of these and if you're using them how they're intended to be used, they should last you for quite a while. All right, so the last thing to check out here then is the Apex Plastic Modeling Set. So this comes in this nice plastic case for you. So it's just a set of beginner tools. So great if you're just getting into the hobby and need a good set of tools to get you started. Maybe so far you've only got like a knife or 
nail clippers or something that you're using to cut the parts off. So it'd be great for a beginner. Or if you have a friend or a partner or, you know, cousin or relative or something that you want to get introduced into the hobby, daughter or son or something, it's a great set of tools to give to someone. So this one I think goes for around 30 bucks for this uh, or 27 yeah, with the uh, coupon code of course. So not too bad, a little latch on the side there to open this up. And then inside here we've got a part separator, a knife, some sanding paper, tweezers and uh, nippers there of course. Now these are not the same nippers as what we had, what we just took a look at. So let's just go ahead and take a look at these first. The cap seems to be the same. But comparing the two, you can see that these are slightly smaller and they also don't have the same uh, blocking mechanisms on there for you know you to, to keep you from over extending this either way. Also the label on there is using the Apex Tools and Hobbies logo instead of the USA Gundam Store uh, bit there. But, so these are not uh, single blade nippers, but your standard nipper where uh, it's a blade on both sides. So instead of a single blade nipper where basically it's, it's a more blunt edge on one side and a blade on the other side where it's just slicing like that, on these it's two uh, blades on the side that will slice is basically sort of pinch the plastic apart like that so the blade is not quite as sharp so typically with these type of nippers you don't get quite as uh, sharp of a cut but these still work perfectly fine I mean I still have uh, a set of super old uh, Tamiya model nippers which are uh, two double bladed like this which I still use uh, just like a backup set for sometimes so, I mean I've got no doubt that even though these are not quite the same like premium quality these are still gonna work perfectly well so I mean just cutting out a couple parts here so you can see uh, I can definitely feel that these have a pretty strong resistance as well too uh, maybe just just because they're brand new I'm sure over time they'll they'll loosen up a little bit uh, but these Definitely noticing it's a little bit different. It's certainly not as uh, smooth, buttery smooth cut like with the 2.0 nippers. It's a little bit more resistance on there, but it's certainly uh, still a, a good cut on there. So yeah, I mean, they seem like really great nippers, especially for a beginner. They're, I mean, not like super top quality like uh, the 2.0 nippers or like, like God Hand nippers or something like that of like the much more expensive ones, but they definitely seem more than enough for any beginner or just a, just a just a normal kind of everyday set of nippers for just snap building kits, things like that. They seem very adequate. As for the part separator, as you guys can see, it's a little bit different from the part separator that we took a look at before. This one does have a rounded blade on there, so it will be good for getting into, uh, getting into parts without damaging anything. It does seem to be pretty nice, actually. I've never used a part separator that's uh, quite like this style. Let me go and just uh, grab another piece here from my parts bin right next to me here and so you can just pop that in the corner and just give that a little wiggle and take something apart again very easy so again for beginners probably not going to use a part separator necessarily all that much because uh, usually the part separators are for after you build the kit then you're working on disassembly for painting or something like that but whether you're painting or not it's still a good tool to have on hand because you never know sometimes you might put uh, a piece together and you forgot the poly cap inside so you need to pop it apart again uh, it just ha it happens it happens to me all the time if you guys have ever watched any of my live streams you know that it happens to me almost every time I build the kit so it's still a good tool to have on hand so that's definitely handy and I've not ever seen really a lot of other uh, basic tool sets that always include a part separator they're usually not included in there so that's nice that they have that in here and then we've got the tweezers which have well, again the apex logo on there instead of the US Gunham Store brand so instead of the other ones uh, just different logo printed on there but they seem to be basically the same and they're both very sharp so you can see this one just like the USA Gunham Store ones that we took like before uh, seem to be very very sharp there so gonna want to be careful with that one thing I would say about this is for a beginner set this is maybe a set of tools that you're gonna want to be getting for someone who's new to the hobby so it might very well be someone who's young who you're giving this to in which case super sharp uh, tweezers like this maybe not the best for young kids I mean obviously there's a knife and nippers in there so you're already working with sharp tools anyway so you're gonna want to you know not be giving these to kids too young anyway but I mean just for the sake of it I think probably not gonna need a super sharp uh, pointed ones like this maybe for young kids probably what you're gonna end up using these for mostly is just for applying stickers on kits and things like that is what these would be most useful for in which case I think maybe ones that are not quite so sharp uh, would be fine for uh, maybe future releases of this set maybe that could be subject uh, to change but I mean either way they're really great for what they are so I mean as long as you or whoever's using them is being careful with them I mean you're gonna be fine you're not gonna be stabbing yourself with them but just to be a little bit careful they are very sharp there but uh, those seem good as well too like we said we already took a look at those basically and then the knife here also looks similar at first but is actually slightly different the metal part is a little bit shorter and also the locking mechanism for the blade is a little bit different where uh, it doesn't have this little bit here you can see on this one 
one, how it has that little tab there to make sure it's like locked in this end part and the actual grip part. This one doesn't have that. So I mean, I'm not really sure how much of a difference that's really gonna make, but uh, just in general, this whole part is a little bit smaller. The overall length though is about the same and the shape is generally similar as well too, but this one, how it's like an angular surface on this one, this one is just completely round and it has the apex uh, modeler's knife uh, molded into that as well too. Oh, and then at the end here, it's a rounded bit instead of, again, this one on the separate modeler's knife, this one being uh, this kind of angled part, right? having like a flat sides on there like that. So uh, similar, but slightly different here for the knife in the tool set. The blades in here looks like uh, probably uh, 10 blades in there is what it looks like instead of 15. So a little bit fewer amount, but still should be good to get going. So we got that. And then the last thing here is just the uh, sanding paper. So basically it looks like what we got here is these uh, two acrylic uh, pieces here with this kind of protective film on there. I think we should be able to take this off, right? All right, there we go. So just these clear acrylic uh, pieces. And then we've got a couple of stickers you can stick on there to label that. So the 1000, uh, P1000 for the 1000 grit sandpaper you can stick on this smaller one like that and then this larger sticker of uh, 600 that you can stick on this larger piece and then the sandpaper is in here so 600 and 1000 grit uh, for this does seem to be pretty good so you can see there's the sandpaper on that side and then on this side is again just also you can peel this off so you can use this just as regular sandpaper like that and just use it as it is or you can peel off the back side and stick it onto your block and carefully apply this here onto there so there you go now you've got a hard type sanding stick that you can use on there instead so that works pretty nicely and it looks like we've got one two three four six pieces of the 1000 grit and five pieces of the 600 grit. So maybe it's supposed to be five and five. Maybe I just ended up having one of one more of the 1000 grit, but anyway. Uh, so about five of the 600 grit and five or six of the 1000 grit as well too. And it's pretty good uh, options as far as the grit goes. 600 for if you need a little bit more uh, heavy lifting, a little bit more that you're trying to take away. 1000 is pretty smooth for uh, just doing your uh, smoothing out of anything like that. When I really need to get some work done, sometimes I'll go down to 400, which is pretty rough at that point. Anything more than that, I, I would switch up to an actual metal file. Uh, but I think this range of 600 and 1000 is a good set to have included with this. So that should work really quite nicely. So finally, the ever important thing uh, for any included plastic case is being able to reuse it. So I just want to now try, if you wanted to take this out, and just try putting this stuff back in here. How easily does it all fit back into here with this? Obviously, of course, you could take out that uh, foam piece and not worry too much about that, but you could just have your tools just floating around in there. But say you didn't want to do that, you wanted to have everything in there nice and securely. Just want to see how easy it is to just put everything back into here relatively easily. So you got your knife, your nippers, your part separator, your tweezers all in there. You can store the sanding paper up here at the top and then the sanding sticks themselves down there and uh, close that up. There you go, easy, nice, very cool. A great set, I think, compared to other beginner sets that I've seen, usually like a different ones, they'll include like a screwdriver or something in there. And for Gumpla modeling and Mecha modeling, you hardly ever need a screwdriver, so it's not a very useful thing to be included. So I think as far as like the general basic tools that any beginner or just like uh, basic uh, simple modeler who's not doing any type of like modification or customization or anything like that, for just a basic set of tools, I think this is a good set of everything that you need to enjoy building so really really nice but all right guys that is it for today a lot of really great tools here to choose from the quality overall seems very nice so there you have it guys that's it for today so a lot of really great tools that we took a look at here today overall the general quality seems very good compared to other alternatives that we took a look at i mean some of the other stuff that i showed you guys that uh, the tools that i normally use everything seems you know very much on par so just as good if not better than other alternatives and i'm not just saying that if i if any of these were in any way not good or not useful, I would definitely tell you guys, like I said, this uh, part separator is good for smaller parts, maybe not as good for larger parts. Uh, like I said, the uh, tweezers are very pointy, so maybe more pointy than you really particularly need. Sometimes uh, a flatter edge is more useful for some things. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to some of these tools, but they're all definitely very good uh, and I definitely recommend them. So, I mean, check them out, guys, if you're looking for any new tools or replacement tools, or like I said, tools that you want to uh, maybe buy for a friend or a child or something like that, uh, you want to get them and introduce into the hobby. 
I think there's a lot of really great stuff here for you guys. So check the link down below to the site. And thank you guys so much for watching today. Again, if you have any other further questions about these, you know, let me know or send them a US Venom store a message. You can ask them as well too, but don't be shy. Feel free to ask if you have any questions. And just thank you guys so much for watching the video. Till next time, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.